Good evening, everybody. It's Minister Lou. Happy Tuesday to you all. Right now, we're going to read out of the book of Acts together. We are on chapter 7. So let's just jump into this, shall we? Then the high priest, excuse me, then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Charan. And he said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into a land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of Chaldeans and dwelt in Charan. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into the land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, <clears throat> when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God, and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. He gave him the covenant of circumcision and so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs and the patriarchs moved with envy sold Joseph into Egypt but God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a Dareth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan in great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first and at the second time Joseph was made known to his brothers and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred three score and fifteen souls so seventy five souls So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Sachin and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emar, the father of Sachem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh with God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. At which time Moses was born, and was exceedingly fair, and nursed up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nursed him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed, and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren 
would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are beat brethren, why do you wrong one to another? But he that did the, his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Excuse me, I have to prop this up a little bit. So this is the Pharisees and the elders talking, I believe, reminding them what happened. <clears throat> then fled Moses at the saying, and was a stranger in the land of Median, where he begat two sons. And when forty years was expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to it, behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for this place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them, and now I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had shewed, the, shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God rise up, unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sina and with our fathers who received the lovely oracles to give unto us to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. That's a good little prophecy, though, saying the Lord was going to give, rise up a prophet of your brethren. That was about Jesus. And God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your God, Rephaim, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, and he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drove, drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who 
found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in the temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is this place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now, excuse me, of whom ye been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So that was Stephen that was talking, not the elders, not the Pharisees. He was talking to the elders and Pharisees, prophesying to them, telling them everything has happened and how they murdered the just one who came. And in his last moments, before he was stoned, he looked up and he seen heaven. He got to see Jesus sitting at the right hand of God and told them, and they didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. And they stoned him for it. Stoned him. Oh my goodness. That's a horrible death. Being bludgeoned to death by various sized rocks. Oh my goodness. Like, wow. Wow. And he sat there telling them, But I see heaven. And more than likely, he got to see heaven because they knew. God knew, Jesus knew that he was getting ready to get stoned to death. They seen it. He knew. And he got to see it. And they were so mad. Stopped up their ears. And all of them ran at once and cast him out of the city and stoned him. Poor Stephen. And he went through reminding them of everything throughout the prophecies. Moses said this was going to happen. He said there was going to be one to come. Reminding them of what happened in Egypt and how all the prophets beforehand, they were killed. And now they've murdered Christ. Betrayed him. And they did not like that. It was like challenging their better knowing, which they didn't know better. Hmm. I thank you all for taking the time to watch this video to come and hear the Word of God. I do enjoy sharing it. Hmm. 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming back because the kingdom of God is at hand and he is going to take his children from this earth and he is going to judge everyone who is left justly and they will feel his wrath and if you're not ready to meet Jesus it's time to get ready to meet him it's time to repent of your sins it's time to turn to Christ and accept him as the Lord and Savior as the Son of God as the one that God sent to us the one who died for our sins on that cross and rose three days later by the power of God I love you guys Jesus loves you guys and our Heavenly Father loves you guys Shalom